Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to our Insider Insight Show. I am honored to have back with me someone who is a very dear friend and someone who um, is despised by the syndicate. You can't beat that. <laughs> why, why is Craig Hemke despised by the syndicate? Because he tells you what you need to know, and it's not what they want you to hear or know about. Why? Because what Craig does with his great platform, tfmetalsreport.com, and what he does and all the interviews he does is he puts you ahead of this globalist constructed curve that ends in a brick wall with the shattering of your freedoms and your liberties and your financial well-being. And he gives you an off-ramp. He gives you an off-ramp to, to prevent you from hitting their wall of disaster. You know, right now we are in, in, in the middle of a perfect storm of chaos that has been building for decades. We have it geopolitically, we have it internationally, we have it domestically. I think all of, and I'm an old guy, Craig is much younger than I am. But in my old long life, I don't know of a more tumultuous time on so many different avenues that we have right now. And one of the things Craig does is he kind of takes all that chaos and he funnels it down and shows you what you need to do to protect yourself and protect your freedoms, protect your financial well-being. This is why the deep state despises them. <laughs> so let me give you a little background on those not familiar with Craig Hemke. As I mentioned, he founded the TFMetalsReport.com in 2010. Same time Operation Freedom came into being, within months of each other. Great minds think alike. Um, great minds tend to put the welfare, and this is what really Craig does. He puts the welfare of you ahead of his own because he takes a tremendous amount of grief for what he does. You know, the bio on Craig is, is that he was a licensed security professional for nearly 20 years, disgruntled by what he describes and many describe as the fraud known as financial services. He retired to a career as a serial, serial entrepreneur. And we are all grateful for him doing that because if it was not for that move, TF Metals Report would not exist and the actually millions of people he has touched over the past 12 years would not have benefited from his insight and his experience. And it's my honor to welcome back to our platform, Craig Hemke. Craig, welcome back to the Operation Freedom Show and Platform. Oh my gosh, Doc, you're so effusive in your praise, and I very much appreciate it. Um, the couple of things, I'm, obviously I'm far younger than you are. You are far younger. <laughs> I, I was thinking as you were trying to describe me as some kind of youthful person, uh, well, how did they describe, every uh, couple of years it comes around in the, in the Catholic Mass where you get the reading about David, uh -huh. and they always describe him as, what, what is it, a youth ruddy in appearance and handsome to behold mm -hmm. that ain't us no um we are we may be ruddy in appearance yeah um and one more thing i would i should further amend my bio it, it's more the fraud of the securities industry um good point you know there are some people out there that are trying to help others you know as financial advisors stuff like a handful at least uh but really it's the securities industry where my eyes were opened as to what a, a fraud and a scam so much of it is. But anyway, I digress. What would you like to talk about today? Well, well so I want to talk about this this um this perfect storm of chaos that is developing, not just in our country, but around the world. Okay? Yeah. So so we are record we are recording this prior to Powell's announcement. And many people have outlined that, well, today's announcement of what Powell's going to do with interest rates is the most important decision or important event that's going to occur on the financial landscape. Now, Craig, tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe there was actually an announcement earlier today with Putin's speech that potentially, if not immediately, has far more significance from a financial standpoint than what Jerome Powell and his talking goons are going to say later today. Am I off? Uh, no, you're not. I, two things on that. One, I would spin the clock backward. I would say the events of the first weekend of March hmm. probably had the greatest significance on everybody's financial future than anything else that Powell was going to say or uh, maybe that Putin has done since. And it was that first weekend of March, about 10, 11 days after the Ukraine war started, 
when the U.S. Uh, kicked Russia out of having access to the SWIFT system, which is the international payment system, and then also froze, confiscated, whatever term you want to use, about $400 billion of their non-domestically held foreign currency reserves. Now, the reason they were holding those non-domestically outside of Russia is so that they could pay their debts, their dollar-denominated debts, should mm -hmm. something like this happen. And the U.S. just said, you can't have them, you can't access them. So without getting into the politics of that in Russia, what that did, that was a massive eye-opening event for every other dollar mm -hmm. creditor whose national programs, national interests may not align uh, exactly with the U.S.'s. You know, hey, oh, wait a second. If we go some direction you don't like, you'll just take our money and cut us out of the dollar system. That has really sped up uh, the machinery uh, to uh, eventually offer some type of alternative to the dollar, and we can we can get into that. Um, the second thing about just Powell itself, you mentioned my decades of um, of being in the uh, financial services or uh, securities industry. Yeah, I, I remember when I first got my Series Seven license, which is to be a stockbroker and that kind of stuff, was uh, June of 1990. Mm. Yeah, uh, and back then. You know, well, a couple of things. You know, if you could get a stock to go up 10% in a, in a year, you were a hero. Right, right now, if it doesn't right. go up double in six weeks, you're an adult. Um, or six but, hours. But, but more importantly, it used to be you'd see Greenspan. Mm -hmm. Every six months, he'd go up to Capitol Hill for his Humphrey Hawkins testimony. And that was the only time you ever saw him. And you certainly didn't hear a couple of times a week from all the regional Fed. You know, they were just these obscure people. Mm -hmm running these regional Fed banks. Nobody cared what they said. It was just Greenspan every six months, you know, and they'd, they'd look at the size of his briefcase. Right. Remember all that? Yeah, Doc? yeah, yeah. Yeah, CNBC he'd crap. His, yeah. He'd mumble along and they'd try to decipher what he said because he'd say all these words without saying anything. And mm -hmm. that was the only time. Now, everything hangs in the balance on what these goons say. Uh, they are treated as if they're omnipotent demigods who have everything under control. And that if they just spin this dial or flip this switch, then... Uh, you know, it's this binary thing. If they do A, B will happen. And if they undo B, then we'll go back to A and everything will be fine. Man, it, nothing could be further from the truth uh, in 2022. But that's how they're treated mm -hmm. uh, by the media, uh, by people with a vested interest in trying to, you know, <laughs> play the greater fool game. Um, it's 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 extraordinary. It's it's troubling, greatly troubling. But it's it's where we are. Well, we saw the same thing with COVID over the past three years, right? For the medical industrial complex. Same thing. Yeah. They kept parading yeah. the Fed equivalents of Fauci and Burks and Redfield and all these cats. And they handed us nothing but chaos. Yeah. you know, And, and Doc, I think that's a really good example because uh, you and I have talked before about, and I know you, this is a big theme of your, your program, uh, is your financial freedom and thinking for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, not just, you know, taking what's shoveled to you by the media right. or the politicians as some type of, you know, uh, settled science, right? Mm -hmm. Got to think for yourself and eat out, you know, and, and so that's your lesson in finances. But it, if you think, well, that's probably not true because the numbers are the numbers. But yeah, let's talk. How about those COVID vaccines? Mm -hmm. You could either have thought for yourself. Mm -hmm. And said, you know, like I did, I think I'll hold off. I've had COVID. This is an experimental technology. I'm going to give this some time and see how this works out. Or you can just line up and go, okay, just hit me right here because I'm scared. Yeah. Um, thinking for yourself mm -hmm. has been the right way to go. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Not just what was shoveled to you by the media and the supposed experts. And the same thing is true of your financial future at this at this critical time. You've got to think for yourself. You can't just take what's shoveled to you by CNBC or Bloomberg or your stockbroker or your neighbor across the back fence. You have to think for yourself. Uh, or you're going to be... <laughs> well, you're going to be... In, I was going to say, kind of like the poor people you know, with the COVID side effects now. Um, you're going to be stuck with long-lasting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Craig. So, so when we look at Putin, he said, "Look, we're going to essentially we're going to annex. We're going to have put it up for a vote, and we're going to annex." Well, yeah. now any attack 
from Ukraine or NATO on those four annex is an attack on Mother Russia. Now, Craig, you were years ahead of this because you pushed the interviews between Bachelor and Cohen about what was happening in Ukraine and what was going to happen in Ukraine and why that was important. Well, Craig, here we are, right? And you've got some grief. Why are you playing these Bachelor Cohen things? Why are you pushing this? Why are you talking about, right? When we were talking about Ukraine years ago, people were like, what are you doing? Why would, don't, don't be talking about it. No, but, but Craig, now, now it escalated now to the point where if they're, they're going to be annexed. And he's calling up more, more reservists. Yeah. This is escalating. This isn't going the other way. Right. And, and this has a profound effect on financial markets, I believe, and people's financial freedom. Am I off? No, it, it doesn't. It, it does. You're right. And uh, there are a number of things you mentioned there that I should uh, touch mm -hmm. on. Um, one, yeah, that's exactly the next move uh, by Russia is to now... Uh, lay a sovereign claim to that territory. Now, whether that's legal or proper or whatever, it doesn't matter what you and I think. It <laughs> right. Meet right. the press thinks. Right. <laughs> it, what matters what Putin and Lavrov and all the rest think, right? right? Mm -hmm. And now they're going to say, uh, you know, any attack into Luhansk or Donetsk is, a retack, is an attack, and that was a red line. You can't do that. This should be the point when rational minds would say, okay, we better, you know, we better shut this down. But Ukraine's not going to go for that. No. I mean, they're not going to say, okay, yeah, you can just have it. And then what, I mean, because the, on their side, they'll say, well, what's next? You're going to lay claim to these other provinces in a couple of years, and then pretty soon we don't have anything left. Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty tenuous deal, right? There's really no, uh, there's no off-ramp. You know, what, didn't Sun Tzu say you've always got to provide your enemy a golden road to yeah. retreat, right? Yes. There's none of that. No. So, and, and yes, I, look, I always tell people, if you're going to follow gold, if you're going to you know, really understand what's going on, rather than just chasing the price that you see on CNBC, you've got to follow, I mean, everything. Right. Macroeconomics, geopolitics, uh, you know, how they, everything. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty comprehensive job I have. So to that end, who are Bachelor and Cohen? John Bachelor is an old, uh, he's still alive, mm -hmm. uh, but he's getting up in the years now. He's an old correspondent for ABC and all these other and he used to have I think he still does but he's again he's been sick he's had cancer and stuff um, a radio program every evening mm -hmm. and after the Maidan revolution uh, of uh, March and February of 2014 uh, he started hosting weekly uh, on his on his radio program Professor Stephen F. Cohen who Maybe a lot of people don't know him. He was also a, at times a, a, a Moscow correspondent for CBS, but he was, was because unfortunately he passed away last year, the preeminent U.S. scholar on Russian studies and Russian history. Mm -hmm. And again, the media tells you the U.S. perspective, and it's very easy as an American to just, that's it, my country, right or wrong or whatever. But what we forget is other countries look at things the same way through the same lens. They have their own perspective. They have their own national interest. Again, doesn't maybe they're wrong from our point of view, but that's not how they see it. And so Professor Cohen was extraordinarily valuable in, and that's why I kept posting those podcasts every week. Again, anybody can go to TF Metals Report and in the search button, just type in Bachelor Cohen and you can find six years of these things, mm -hmm. 300 of them probably. Um, and what was so valuable is getting those really prepared me for the because you could see where this was going to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, NATO had pushed as far as they could. Russia, you know, after with their history of what they lose 26 million people to the Nazis right. in the great patriotic wars, they call it. Mm -hmm. I mean, as misguided as it may be that, you know, U.S. or NATO or, you know, Western Europe is a threat to them. You can't blame them for not being excited about having all these troops coming up to their borders. Right. So we've gotten to where we are. And like I said, the, the problem now is there's no off-ramp. And now, as you said, this impacts markets, but markets somewhat indirectly at present because it impacts economies now dramatically. Mm -hmm. The EU economy is basically shutting down due to energy costs, and it's September I mean, what's that going to look like by November and December? So the EU, all those EU countries are going into deep recession. 
well, how's that impact the ECB and what they do with the euro? How does that, by extension, then impact uh, what the dollar index is doing? What the dollar then begins to soar because 58% of its valuation is weighted toward the euro. So the dollar then soars because the euro goes down. Now the dollar soars. That means the bond market does this, which makes the stock market do that. And so all of this has a – the geopolitics has this uh, – direct indirectly direct impact on the financial markets i guess is what i'm trying to say and it's not going to get any better it's not because just uh, last week craig uh, russia and china they signed an agreement right switching mm-hmm. payments for gas from us dollars to one the chinese currency and rubles the russian currency mm-hmm. and then you had putin a week or two ago saying that they're the brics countries uh, uh you know, the Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. And now you add to it, uh, you know, Indonesia is now coming that way, and so is Turkey. Uh, the BRICS developing a global reserve currency. Again, this all puts pressure on the dollar, putting pressure on financial markets. Right. Which is why the, there are a number of people that say that when you have a sea of chaos like this developing, the best stability platform would be the precious metals platform based on historical situations that were fairly similar. Right. Yet, Craig, many people that have seen that coming have taken positions in gold and silver are saying, well, I, I thought they'd be doing better considering this sea of chaos. Yeah. So why don't, you, why don't you address that, Craig? Because many many people are upset um, about what the platforms of gold and silver and precious metals and commodities are doing, at least at this point. But obviously that can change in a very quick second. Well, Doc, um, if you need to use a restroom or go get another cup of coffee, now's the time. Because <laughs> <laughs> this might take a little while. I knew where you were going. I'm sitting in my mind trying to formulate how can I keep this as brief and direct as possible so I don't lose people. Um, you, that's a multifaceted question. I'll get to your answer in a second, but I got to start with where you began. Mm-hmm. And that's this notion of the BRICS countries. You could define them as the BRICS, Brazil, you know, Russia, India, China, South Africa, whatever. You could define it now, what people understand is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Mm-hmm. They were the ones that were meeting last week when Putin and Xi got together. Just this kind of Eastern alliance, okay? Um, coming out of World War II, the, US, the global economy is decimated. You need a currency so that people have confidence in the currency, something that they can have confidence in. They can restart the global economy and global trade. U.S. had 25,000 metric tons of gold. And so... It was logical and still had a manufacturing base. We weren't bombed out like Dresden or, you know, Japan. So we'll make the the dollar reserve currency. That went on for whatever, 30, uh, 27 years until there were so many dollars out there and other countries in their foreign currency reserves began to redeem their dollars for gold that the U.S. fell all the way down to less than 9,000 tons. And they said, no, wait a second. We're not doing this anymore. That's game over. We're not going to have any gold left by 1975 if we keep going. Okay, so as part of that, now now we've got to somehow continue to have demand for dollars, though. And so schemes have been constructed over the years, whether it's pricing energy in dollars, mm-hmm. like crude oil, mm-hmm. petrodollar, uh, or whether it's the encouraging now uh, in all this 50 years since of countries with foreign currency reserves. Again, you're China. You sell your rubber dog poop to us, and in return, you get dollars. Now you get this big pile of dollars you got to do something with. So what do you do? Well, you build a bunch of infrastructure, and you know that's why they got all these ghost cities and stuff. But you also buy U.S. Treasuries. You just plow it right back in. So all these dollars, thirty trillion dollars of debt we've run up, should have been extraordinarily inflationary, but we've, they've been put out in the world and then kind of quarantined mm-hmm. by being put back into our bond market. Okay. So what now is happening? is these other countries, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization countries, have figured out, again, with the big weekend back in March, you know, the U.S. isn't really trustworthy with this current system. If you get sideways with them, they'll just cut you out. So we better start our own system. Mm -hmm. We better have an alternative. Mm -hmm. 
So they've built their alternative to SWIFT. And now it appears they're building out an alternative to the dollar as well. It won't supplant the dollar. The U.S. and Europe and all this, the West will still continue to use it. But these Eastern countries will now have an alternative. And in the end, what that does is it lessens the demand for dollars. These All these schemes, the petrodollar, the, the bond market, they all maintain demand for dollars. Mm-hmm. But what this offering alternative will bring will be less demand for dollars. And it, just like old Econ 101, if the supply is increasing and the demand is falling, the price or the value of whatever it is, oranges, widgets, you know, whatever, falls. Mm-hmm. And that's ultimately such a, a really big problem. Now, okay, so to the end, uh, to, to the end of your question, mm-hmm. like I said, this was going to be a long one. No, this was going to be no a it's perfect. Story. No, no, okay. it's great dissection. Now, to the end of your question, why is gold not going anywhere? Because as part of that scheme of moving off of the gold standard, because there, you know, there wasn't enough gold around to mm-hmm. keep, because the U.S. would have lost it all. Beginning in 1975, the U.S. created gold futures contracts. Uh, that trade in New York, and then you know, and that's been accepted now all over the world. They trade, you know, the same kind of derivative contracts in London and all this other stuff. There are now ETFs. There are unallocated accounts, which are a lot of those are a fraud, uh, where they tell you own gold, but you can't get it if you want it. You got to wait ninety days and that kind of stuff. There's what I'm getting at is there's all these derivatives, fake gold that's out there that's treated as being as good as gold. Mm-hmm. Well, the price mechanism for determining the price is the trading of these things that aren't actually gold, Mm -hmm. these futures contracts. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's the price that you see when you watch, oh, look, it's uh, $1,672 on CNBC. Well, what's $1,672? That's the futures contracts. That's what they're trading at. Like anything else, that's supply and demand too. There's no, nobody is actually swapping physical gold at those prices. I mean, that's just kind of the benchmark for eventual physical transactions elsewhere, but it's not really found through the physical metal. So if it's in about supply and demand of those futures contracts, well, what impacts that? The dollar, Mm -hmm. uh, the bond market, uh, inflation expectations, all this other stuff that really doesn't have anything to do with gold, physical gold supply and demand, or the true value of it, or the true amount of how much gold there really is in the world. So I, I don't mean to Again, it's it's almost kind of callous of me to shrug it off because I know there are people that, you know, they've maybe got too much money in gold. And if you're really worried about it, maybe you do. <laughs> um, but there, so I don't mean to just brush it aside, say, ah, just buy more, take advantage of it, whatever. But that really is the case. Um, you need to use this time, continue to use this time because eventually, just like in World War II, Doc, and this is what, the, again, Think, I'm sorry. Can I keep going? I apologize. No, keep going. It's, you're, okay, no, right. you're, you're running to Remember going. how I, no, I just great. said, coming out of World War II, the dollar became the reserve currency because you had to have something with confidence. You just had to look at the experience they had in the Weimar Germany, right? right. With steel barrels full of cash. Mm-hmm. If you're going to have international trade, if somebody's going to use your currency for international trade, you got to have some. You got to have some confidence behind it. Well, how would how would you instill confidence? in whatever currency is eventually offered by the BRICS nations, whether it's an actual currency that people use or whether it's just a something to facilitate trade between Russia and China and India and Iran and all these other countries, how would you, how would you have confidence in that thing? You can't just basket, basket, basket it all together with their own currencies. Maybe you back that with gold. In fact, mm-hmm. that'd probably be the most logical thing. Right. You know, you'd say, yeah. well, this currency is backed with gold and, you know, to a certain extent, maybe not fully, whatever. But that's always how it's worked in the past because gold gives you confidence. So if this is all the direction that's headed. Then eventually this whole scheme of pretend gold is going to fail because people are going to demand the real thing, particularly in the East. So, uh, boy, this was a long rambling answer, but I hope I reinstilled or created some confidence in people that are frustrated with what they've seen so far in understanding why it is the price, the digital derivative price has fallen, but why it is you need to continue to hold it and perhaps even buy more. So after Putin's speech, he spoke about not being bullied, about doing everything necessary to defend themselves. Right. Right. Okay. And people read that into, well, Putin, he's 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 going to launch he, he's going to launch a nuke. Well, well, Craig, I believe based on what your outstanding dissection, 
I believe the most tactical nuke he could deploy would not be something flying through the sky. Yeah. It would be a press release. And it would be, guess what? The yuan and ruble are not are now backed by physical assets. Gold, silver, oil, natural gas. Have a good day. Yeah. If he did that, Craig, I believe the ramifications would be enormous. Am I off on that assessment? No, not at all. Um, there, there's going to have to be some uh, um, qualifications for something like that because there's enough, you know, the ruble prior to, you know, the, the onset of the war. I mean, there was enough ruble out there in the world and you want there's certainly enough you want out in the world you wouldn't want westerners showing up and trying to pull the same trick on russia and china right mm -hmm. so it might be within you know their own little cabal mm -hmm. uh where you'd have some redeemability but certainly that again that would be a financial nuclear bomb like you said um and this is why those countries have been so reluctant to do it mm-hmm uh, because they know what the ramifications will be. I mean, you talk about getting sideways with the U.S., you know, threaten the U.S. economy by, you know, crashing the dollar. Um, <laughs> usually that transition, let's put it this way in the past. Uh, in the past, you know, prior to the dollar was the British pound, mm -hmm. had the reserve currency, you know, when did that lose? Well, it was war. Mm -hmm. You go back further, it was the Dutch and the Spanish, you know, and all that stuff. Usually that transition is not peaceful. Mm -hmm. You know, the country that has that exorbitant privilege, as it was called, doesn't just like say, OK, yeah, right. Our no. turn's over. You can do it now. Um, and that's what they would be risking. And, you know, as much as um, the U.S. is in a problematic situation, we still have a lot of missiles and we still have aircraft carriers. And we I mean, it's, it could really get um, sideways. Fast, and that's what again. That's what's so concerning about all of this because there's no real off ramp at this point um, to try to dial things back. So when you peruse the world, when you peruse our own financial markets, you know you look at our economy, and uh, it's almost like every other day the assessment of what the GDP in the third quarter is going to be right. goes down, right? I mean, right. we've gone from, what, 2.6 in the latest now uh, in the third quarter is, what, 0.3%, I think, the Atlanta Fed came out with. And by the time this comes out, you know, by the time our interview is released in the next 24, 48 hours, it hey, be zero. Here we go. Yeah. Um, we have huge stagnation in this country. We have huge inflation. We just got the inflation numbers out of Europe with Germany with their energy index being up, what, 46% in a year? <laughs> I mean, that's that's not consistent with <laughs> survival. Right. right. So, well, so, so, Craig, what on your radar screen, when you look at all of this stuff that we've talked about so far, what concerns you the most? What 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 wakes Craig Hemke up at two o'clock in the morning going, oh man, you know what? This is the big this is the big enchilada, this one this issue. Um or concern. Fourth kind of fourth turning societal collapse. Yeah. That's I mean, I'm not look, I think people I mean, I'm not some lunatic, you know, living out <laughs> you know, in a silo someplace, right. you know, eating beans. Um, that's just, that's been my biggest concern. And I mean, again, you can see this all over the world. And and, and getting back to, and, and don't let me forget to come back to some of the stuff you mentioned earlier in your question, but um, the off-ramp. Yeah. Um, where is Europe going to get their fuel, their natural gas? If they if they painted themselves into a corner and, and can't go back, Mm-hmm. Um, without whatever the implications would be, where are they going to get their gas for this winter? Mm -hmm. How are they going to keep people warm? Mm -hmm. And then how are they going to keep people fed? Mm -hmm. You got whole sections of the German economy just shutting down because mm -hmm. it's too expensive, you know, and, and it's not just Germany. No. I mean, hungry, cold people um, do a lot of, you know, that's where, you know, you start manning the barricades, you know, viva la resistance. Mm -hmm. And and so that's and that's and the same thing 
could happen here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And again, that sounds like crazy talk. Mm -hmm. But all you got to do is go back to 2020 mm -hmm. and see, you know, the mob. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they were just angry. How about being cold and hungry on top of being angry? You know that. Remember the the there have been those studies that have been done. You know, after a natural disaster, you know, and how it's like in the first day everybody's just kind of stunned. Right. After 24 hours, you mm -hmm. can't believe, wow! And you all try to help each other. And after the second day, you start to get a little nervous because help hasn't showed up. And by the third day, all hell breaks loose. Right. I mean, think of that writ large. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing that. Uh, concerns me more than anything else because then you don't know what comes out the other side you know uh, the americans had a revolution you know in the late 18th century that gave us this current form of government you know and was you know mostly peaceful after 1781 mm -hmm. the french had a revolution that brought out roads here mm -hmm. and the guillotine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just don't know where that ultimately this is all headed. Like I said, transition periods in the past have not been defined peacefully. And that's that's what you want to talk about what keeps me up at night. That's that's what bothers. That's what frightens, concerns me more than anything. And if, if Craig, if you had to create a pathway out of this. What would be some of the first steps you would take to create a pathway out of this, not just for you and your family, but for our country, the world. <laughs> if I was president? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. In the Hemke administration in right. 2024? Mm -hmm. Well, again, this is all fun and hypothetical because it doesn't mean a hill of beans, right? And then if you think, even if someone did get elected that would try to do things differently, well, we saw how that worked. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I think really, I just watched Latin. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm sounding scatterbrained. No. Did you watch on PBS, the Ken Burns thing about the Holocaust? Yeah. Did you see all the stuff with Lindbergh and America first and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Did that not sound familiar? Sure did. <laughs> there were people then. Now again, proved to not be the right decision, right. obviously. But it was, I mean, that was almost identical to mm -hmm. where people are now, mm -hmm. um, saying we should just stay out of this, take care of us, and all that kind of stuff. And they had some points, mm -hmm. right, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But in the end, yeah, I guess a lot of people died. But um, the, in the end, we have, you know, our current history. I think I would start there. Mm -hmm. I would say, look, we have to understand the math is the math, and this is terminal Right. So we better start looking out for number one. If that means cutting off Europe, uh, we have to find some kind of cooperation. As much as I despise the uh, C the Con Chinese Communist Party mm -hmm. and all that they stand for, mm -hmm. we've got to find some type of commonality, some kind of common ground with that side of the world. Because because uh, we have a losing hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got to figure out a way out of that. So that's where I would start. And if that means... You know, sacrificing Ukraine. You know what? I, I'm seriously. Um, that's. I think that's where, if I were president, that's where I'd have to start is finding some type of conciliation, some kind of common ground with these financial adversaries before they turn into full-on military adversaries. Right. I, I I completely agree with you. You see, I I've long said, long before February, we got to get in a room with Putin. G because she's involved in this, Putin and G, yep. and and Ukraine, and say okay, it's coming to an end. This is stopping, yeah. okay. Yeah. This is stopping, and and we're gonna. No one leaves the room. No one. You know, my dad used to do a thing with negotiations, where he would lock the door, put the biggest guy in his firm at the door. And said, nobody's, and he, yeah. he would say to these, you, nobody's coming out of here till we have an agreement. Yeah. And by the way, nobody's going to the bathroom either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No smoke break. You want another cup? And, and he used to feed him coffee. You want, you want another cup of coffee? <laughs> right? But, but that's the, but we need that type of, of situation, Craig. Nobody comes out of the room till this is fixed. Right. And they can fix it. 
There's give and take on all sides, but they can fix it. And I agree with you. This is not, but again, Doc, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's we not should look at it's not the French happen. and the British. That's right. And say, I know you got a seat at the table, but really, you're second class. You're not. We don't right. care what you think. You know, I don't care what the Green Party of Denmark thinks of all this. It doesn't right. matter. Right. Okay, we're going to do what we got to do. Yeah. Um, that is what should happen. Yeah, but, but it's, it's not, not gonna. It's not going to happen. I mean, it doesn't. Even if you were, if Doctor President Yanda was uh, <laughs> the president, which I'd vote for you in a second, um, you would just run into the same kind of deep state brick wall. You know, all the congressmen have their funding you know and their relationships with the defense companies and you've got everybody at the state department and in the pentagon and all the other vested interests that are there you're not it's like it's like i'm, I'm sorry i'm rambling no you're but not anybody can go back and look at the timeline of when trump comes out and says i'm take we're gonna pull our troops out of syria what the hell do we even have did we declare war on syria why no. do we have bases in syria can you right. remind me again right um anyway and then within 48 hours boom Allegedly, there's a chemical weapons attack. Right. And anybody can go back and... I mean, we knew at the time what was going on there. That was a massive scam. Yeah. Uh, to run to keep the U.S. involved there. And then that's been proven to be true. Yeah. But yet... And that's the same kind of thing that would happen now. You'd try to do this, and then they'd, something would happen, and then the media would spin up, you know, political support against you, you know, and all the enraged politicians had come out to talk about how you're you know you've been captured by the chinese you know and that sort of stuff and sadly that's just i don't know it paints a pretty bleak picture doc but this is a pretty bleak time well and the last couple people prior to trump that talked about this jack kennedy november 63 yeah. took that ride in dallas because he yeah. talked about what shattering the cia into a thousand pieces yeah. and ronald yeah. reagan was also talking about a similar situation and they you know, he 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 took a hit two, two months well. right two month two months after he got in office. Yeah. So I agree with you, Craig. What should happen is probably not going to happen. And our la and and it comes back to okay. So if that's if they're if the big boys aren't going to make it happen, what needs to be happened to bring pre peace and prosperity to the masses? Then people individually have to do right. what they have to do that you have outlined. They have to. They have to take the necessary steps to protect themselves because right. the leaders, in quotes, aren't going to do what's needed for peace and prosperity. Yeah, work and work with your own community, build your own network, like-minded people that you can all help each other out. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, that's what it ultimately boils down to. Sadly, yeah. I mean, it's it's a tragedy, um, and maybe by the grace of God, you know, something will change. And uh, it will be given more time to kind of sort this stuff out. But it's just nothing. It could uh, there's it's never been more important um, than now to um, understand this for yourself, educate yourself, make your own decisions. And as we've always said it at my site, prepare accordingly, because the consequences for you, not just financially, yeah. um, <laughs> are severe mm -hmm. if you don't uh, think this through ahead of time. Yeah. I am going to let you go because, well, you have quite <laughs> the interview ahead of you. Uh, you want to educate our listeners because uh, you have uh, someone who has sounded the alarm for decades that you're going to be talking to. Who might that be, Craig? Well, I'm, I got to tell you, I, I, look, I'm just as I always tell people I'm just as dope with a MacBook. I mean, I'm talking to you on my MacBook right now out here in the middle of nowhere. But I had the good fortune of starting this website 12 years ago, and that has given me access to people I, sh I shouldn't have access to. It's, I, sh I mean, seriously. And so uh, I actually, uh, within the hour, I get to, uh, through a, a little bit of side work I do, I got a friend of mine uh, who uh, started a bullion company his daughter runs a bullion company, and uh, so I helped them with some of their audio work uh, out of Canada. And for Sprott Money, uh, I get to talk to Dr. Ron Paul. Um, people have asked me in the past, you know, of all the people you've had a chance to talk to, who would you like to talk to most? I said, well, I, I th who have you not talked to yet? And I said, I'd give anything to talk to Ron Paul. So I won't get to spend much time with them. I'll see if I can uh, make his acquaintance and get him to come back onto my site sometime uh, in the near future. But talk about a guy who, 
uh, is a champion mm-hmm. of liberty and libertarianism and sound money mm-hmm. and holding people accountable and speaking the truth. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's a national treasure. He'll be mm-hmm. somebody that the history books, huh, history is written by the victors, so maybe they won't be. But anyway, the history books should be kind to um you know for all of his efforts to audit the fed and bring attention to you know all this stuff um his son rand is trying to carry that on i'm a big supporter of his but um anyway a long answer i get to uh, talk to dr paul in a little bit and i'm pretty excited about it and educate our listeners on tfmetalsreport.com because it's a great site with a great community with great content well thank you doc i it, it, you know it really started out just kind of analyzing price you know and everything that was going on in the markets 10, 12 years ago. And we still do that. And I mm-hmm. write some analysis every morning about what's going on in the world. And I record a podcast every day, uh, kind of summarizing what has happened in the world. Uh, but the site itself is uh, is more about the community. Like I mentioned earlier, um, we're all kind of in the same boat, everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, conservative, labor, you know, any, wherever you are around the world. Um, this is happening whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm. And so we've got to prepare. And so the, the community at the site is probably really one of the most, if not the most valuable part of the whole site. It, it, it's not free. I could probably make it $100 a month if I wanted to, but it's 15 bucks a month. So it's, I mean, keeps the lights on, pays my exorbitant healthcare costs, <laughs> which my wife just informed me are going up by another 20% this year. Um, so it's not free, but... Uh, it does keep the trolls out too, and allows us to keep focused on, you know, the the, the problem at hand, which is kind of, you know, again, preparing accordingly for what's all coming. So anyway, long answer again, but uh, tfmetalsreport.com is where you can find us. Craig, I'd like to thank you for everything you have done, are doing, and will do. I look forward to your time with Ron Paul, and I look forward to every meeting we have, Craig, because you provide great information that immediately benefits every person willing to listen and learn. I thank you, Craig, for putting yourself out front on this because as I said earlier, you take a lot of grief for doing this. Many people would just say, you know what? It ain't worth it. Yeah. But you obviously care more about people than you do yourself. And I thank you for your perseverance, dedication, and sacrifice. And I thank you folks for joining us. Until next time, Dave Janda signing off. Dream big and dare to fail. Thanks for your time today.